<laughs> and there's two people, two people in the front row like this going, make me laugh. Oh, I paid. God. Those are the worst. And people. now we're ready. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, God, John. This morning was my, uh, the charity event I told you I was doing. Yeah. How'd, how'd that work out for you? Uh, so first of all, I realized that I've never written like clean jokes ever in my life. <laughs> and there was going to be a nun in the room, just so everybody has a little contact. <laughs> he was doing an event that was supposed to be a clean comedy act, which is harder than people think. Um, because mm. you kind of want to talk like you do with your friends. And, uh, and yes, go ahead. Sister, oh. who, what was sisters? What was the sister's name? It's got to be something good. Oh, it was Sister Mary. I was like, oh, God. Oh. <laughs> I was like, this is just boring. <laughs> yeah, you need like Sister Sabrina from the Nazareth people. You know, mm. ours always had like three names to it. Oh, yeah. This was just, oh, I realized that every punchline I had was like, oh, Sean, first and foremost, they gave me the mic and I realized I couldn't even say hell because <laughs> the mic oh, wow. wasn't the mic wasn't like on and usually i would have been like jesus christ who the fuck gave me this mic i didn't right. even, I, I took the mic and i was like hello can you guys hear me in the back <laughs> hello in the back <laughs> what? okay so were you at an old folks home is that what you said mm -hmm. i'm trying yeah. to remember it was like a home for the elderly and the did you step on anybody's oxygen line and they were starting to choke while you were on stage hey no <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Sean, like drunk people at a bar, yeah, I have some respect for them, but there was this right. old lady sitting there, like this little old cute lady, and yeah. in between the mic went off, and I took the next mic, and I was like, where was I? And she repeated exactly the set last sentence I said, and I was like, Jesus Christ, I need to take you everywhere I go. <laughs> right. That's your designated driver right there. <laughs> well, how does so... From a comedy perspective, people don't understand you. You got to go play where you get paid to play. So mm -hmm. um, I, I played some weird rooms from big rooms to little rooms. And, you know, when you you've got a set is what it's called. Things that you know work and that are funny. And that's why they hired you because you're a pro. And, and then you look around the room and go, none of them are, get, are going to get any of these jokes. So mm -hmm. let's try some new material today. So that is exactly what happened. <laughs> How'd that go? Uh, there, were, there was like a handful of people who were laughing. But there was this one lady at the corner of my ma eye who I don't know whether she had a stroke, but she was just mean mugging me the entire time, Sean. I had no way to know whether she's enjoying it. Is she not understanding right. what I'm saying? I didn't know what the hell was going on. <laughs> she was judging you as what she was doing. So what I, what I always try to tell people is the first time I ever went up to do stand-up, I was an experienced stage actor. I'd mm -hmm. been paid for a decade to do stage work. And then your light is off on your face. Oh, damn. Um, and then I go up and the microphone smells like beer and soup and maybe a little vomit mixed in, but it's just an, it's rancid. Like, so you don't want to get that close to it, but you also need to have good enunciation and pronunciation. So, and there's, there, you got one spotlight on you and I see all of these little fibers just around mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's two people, two people in the front row like this going, make me laugh. Oh I God. Paid. Those are the worst. And, and I was like, okay, just get your first line out. Cause there's a, I don't care how long you've been doing it. There's just a weird, weird little panic of, okay, are we going to have some fun? Let's start. And then you got to get your first line out, which, you know, in a deal like that, you go, I don't know who these two fuckers are, but evidently the FBI is going to arrest me after this show. And then boom, we'd, we'd hit and roll into the thing, mm -hmm. but you've got to figure out what may, may being the key word work with any room. And I, you know, you and I've talked about it before. The differences in comedy from country to country, language to language. Mm -hmm. You know, people love to hear me do comedy in Spanish just because I butcher the language, which makes it even funnier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. Right. <laughs> See, there are times where like a Hindi sentence in a joke will get the biggest laugh because of my fucked up oh. pronunciations. <laughs> right. He ain't from here. He ain't from here. I told you he wasn't. Yeah, they just think you're an obnoxious Brit coming home to judge everybody. Mm -hmm. It used to work better when we were in charge. It really did. The water <laughs> flowed. Jeez. 
Yeah, I played um, – it was like Emporia, Kansas. And you ordinarily would think that would be a small show, but it's about 250 people, which, I mean, I'll, I'll take that house when I was first starting out. Mm-hmm. And they were – it was a small college town and I really didn't know anything about the place. So the first crowd was awesome because they were from the college. Second crowd, all like German farmers. Not funny at all. No. But then they all congratulated me on how good the show was. And nice. I was like, were we, were we at the same place? Because <laughs> it didn't feel like it up there. <laughs> oh god yeah sean i went up there forgot everything that i'd written in my little <laughs> note cards and i started with a joke which i knew would work for the sole reason that i was like this is probably the most wisest room <laughs> that i've ever performed right. in <laughs> i can smell the wisdom is what i said <laughs> okay that's pretty solid that's pretty solid <laughs> i'm not saying it's diapers and leftover sharks <laughs> but that was pretty good, and then you got everybody won over at that point. No, how long did fun. you how long did you play for? Fifteen minutes. Oh, it's not. Mm-hmm. And people go, "Oh, that's all," and you go, "Oh, you've never bombed for fifteen minutes." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I gave back the mic, like the guy who set up the event was like, "Are you done? It's been like fifteen ish minutes," and I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, dude, I had to make all of that up. <laughs> None of that is from my As usual we set." <laughs> Shit. So when I first started doing stand-up, Andrew Dice Clay was at Mm -hmm. his peak and selling out shows of 10 and 15,000 people. And for those of you who don't know who I'm talking about, you should Google it to find out what was okay to say back in the middle 80s. Because I mean, when I I tried to do some stand-up a couple of years ago, I Mm -hmm. went and I just... I thought all people did was cuss. I just didn't think it was funny. Like, and it was, which girl could gross somebody else out with sexual exploits, which, you know, of course I was like, that sounds like fun. And evidently I was the only one in the audience thinking that everyone else was like, Oh, you know, and I, so I didn't understand the humor. Mm -hmm. And that's when I knew I was probably too old to try it again. And I think now what I have to do is pick a specific audience. And I think I should do a show for only ex-Catholics, but you have to prove that you were used to go to church at one point. Mm -hmm. And I think I could do a good solid 40 minutes on that and get myself some kind of a version of a show out of it. I don't know if I'll get excommunicated or whatever else comes with it, but, you know, isn't that really more press? I mean, let's be honest. I know. (laughs) (laughs) The best part was just before I was going up, uh, Christine messaged me and she was like, I hope you kill. And I was like, it's at an elderly folks home, love. She was like, okay, I hope you don't kill then. (laughs) Okay, that's audience. (laughs) But what do you find out? So... What I would always try to judge is how many, because I was playing cities and rural areas, Mm -hmm. totally opposite audiences. And the way they reacted was opposite. And and I always tried to just figure out how do you read a room? And I was generally pretty good at it. Mason City, Iowa show still sticks in my head Mm because there was a blown speaker above me. So I heard reverb from my own mic off of a blown speaker that was in the ceiling above me and it drove me insane oh, 700 wow. people at the show and then but everyone was like oh that was great and i'm like are you sure because and, and you know i stupidly instead of just just say thank you and move on mm-hmm. right just say thank you and move on and i just couldn't get over it and it still haunts me to this day and that was like 40 years 35 years ago still i can hear that <laughs> <laughs> How I told you, like, one of the first shows I ever did in Oklahoma, maybe, like, 2012, 13, something like that. Is this Wait. where you got beat up? No, no. Okay. I didn't get beat up. <laughs> okay, you got threatened horribly. How about that? Is that, is that more fair? Mm-hmm. That is more accurate. All right. All right. <laughs> one time when I was doing this, and I think I went on stage, and I got nervous, and Alex thought, I will not be nervous if he screams something out. So he screams, go back to your country. (laughs) (laughs) And I look in the crowd because of the light and I'm like, you idiot, you drove me here. What do you mean go back to your country? (laughs) You brought your own heckler. Mm -hmm. Hey, that would be pretty good because I am am decent with hecklers. I've, I've had a couple over the years that were just drunk and you can't, I mean, you just, you can't reason with them. And you can't humiliate them because they're intoxicated. So they don't care. 
Oh, that was good. That was here. Let me show you my junk. And then you're like, okay, we're all getting arrested. I'm, you know. Oh, Sean, Monday right. night, there was a guy who was ready to fight one of the comics in the audience, but he was like so drunk, had a fight with someone outside, broke his phone, and he was just standing oh. there fuming and drinking a beer. <laughs> I was like, guys, I know you're like the crowd work. Please don't talk to him. <laughs> right. Somebody leave that guy alone before something bad happens. So how do you get booked for a gig like that? So I had a booking agent mm -hmm. that booked me from the state of Oklahoma and every once in a while down in Texas, all the way up to Minnesota. For those of you not from the United States, that's about 1500 miles. Yeah. And you would start and you'd go into Kansas up to Iowa, you know, um, I, Iowa city. And then, um, and then I think the tip of, of Minnesota, and I can't remember the name of the city there, and then you'd come back down. It was like a 12-city tour. You'd be out for almost a month. Yeah. And then if you could personally book your own gigs, like you'd call Iowa City, Iowa, and maybe you played three weeks ago, but you're coming back through and go, hey, if you want to give me a place to stay for tonight, I'll do 30 minutes for you. And you negotiate mm -hmm. without your regular agent. It's kind of weird, like you would double up – if I was an agent, I'd be mad because I wouldn't get any money off of it, but it was so common, no one cared. Yeah. Here, it's pretty much the same here, but a lot of times, you know the weird part? It, a lot of times, someone will just reach out to me on Instagram or on WhatsApp. Right. Nice. They got my number right. from someone some, somewhere. Right. And that's pretty much how I get booked here. Like, corporate yeah, events I mean, are the same, but corporate events, right. they'll at least give me a little bit of leeway to swear. <laughs> right. Yeah, but see, when I did corporate, they always wanted me to do, like, motivational comedy. And you go, you know, those are not the same. Like, I'm either motivating or I'm humiliating. I don't think mm -hmm. <laughs> you are in it. Yeah, it is almost <laughs> impossible to tell someone to live your dreams and your previous joke was, like, <laughs> how you hate people. <laughs> did your doctor give you a refund on that acne treatment? Because it's not working. But next week. <laughs> I want you to wake up every day and thank God in the morning for the day that's going to be good. Mm. That doesn't work. It doesn't work. Wow. Like Monday, I was so lazy that I started the set with a joke, which was basically where a friend of mine called me and asked me, can you do me a favor? So I hung up and I went to my <laughs> next joke. <laughs> I thought that was... A <laughs> okay that's pretty good that so is pretty I didn't good. even know what I should do that joke here because it felt so mean spirited in an, in an right. elderly folks home <laughs> I think I think that's pretty solid I really do I would be curious um, and and I've got I'm starting to take one more night off of work each mm -hmm. week and Wednesday's not the night you want to be off because there's you know there's no real shows and stuff for me to get involved in and then people just rook me into some other political thing. You know, I, I got enough of that shit going. I'm, I'm well known enough for that. Um, but I, I would like to, and maybe this is something you and I can do in our spare time as if either one of us had some, mm -hmm. but I would actually like to write just a five minute opening, you know, just your little knockout piece and, uh, and perform it if I'm traveling anywhere too. Cause you know, I, mm -hmm. you know, I was in Greece, I was in Croatia easily could have done a club night there. I mean, I didn't have anything else going oh, yeah. on. But at my age, I'm in bed at 9 or 9.30. I would actually have to stay up to do the second show. Yeah. And that could be problematic. <laughs> and I know that sounds insane. <laughs> do you guys have a three in the afternoon show, like a happy hour show? <laughs> <laughs> I was actually telling this uh, the people here tonight, like this morning, where I was like, this is the earliest I've ever done this in my life. Usually it's right. at 10 30 or 11 at night in a right. dark, dingy room with drunk people around. Right. This is like sober yeah. 10 30 a.m. I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna say to y'all. <laughs> oh wow. I think I <clears throat> I think that'd be pretty interesting to get to do that a few times where you could polish it a little bit. Because you know, the first time you gotta see what works. For those of you who don't mm. know we try out jokes on different audiences and you're, you're trying to figure out when the, so every joke has the same deal. You tell a story and then you take a 90 degree turn and that's, that's comedy. Um, the best at it in the world is Dave Chappelle, I believe. And whether you like his comedy or not, it is perfect. He will tell an entire story and then go somewhere you never thought he'd go. And that doesn't mean it works the first five or 10 times you tell the joke. So it's got to be quick so you can get on to something that'll make sure you still get paid. 
for the mm-hmm. show. <laughs> <laughs> but I did caricatures of um, like TV commercials, shows, and everything with Velcro pull-off costumes. Mm-hmm. So when I was done, I had to pick up my costumes and get them in a box to get them off stage to get them reset for the 10 p.m. show. Oh God, Dave. That, right. that sounds miserable. <laughs> but it was fun. Well, mm-hmm. it's, you know, people go, oh, I didn't like that. It's not an attack on you. You go, oh, okay, well, what didn't you like? And they go, well, you sounded stupid. And I go, because I was supposed to be stupid. That, that was the character. And they go, oh, well, you then you won. <laughs> <laughs> but you should actually try our home club in Bricktown, where it is yeah. Tuesday and Wednesday. Open mic. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. And I think the first Do they show- smoke there? No, not anymore. Oh, okay. oh good. Okay. I might, I might give that one a shot. I am, so I, I was looking at, and I don't remember the name of the place off Northwest Expressway. And I, I went in and I'm like, oh man, I, I have lung issues. So I can't be in a room where people have been smoking or are smoking. Now, if they were doing it 20 years ago, I'm fine. But mm. yeah, it, but I, I'd be down for it. Well, we ought to write ourselves a little, uh, our little gig. Mm. The, um, you know, our show, we need to change it to the state superintendent rather than the OK Gov. I, yeah. I think we could we could make it work at this point. <laughs> Dude, yeah. that stuff's crazy. I need to go through that script and kind of work it with you so that we update the damn thing. Yeah, I and mean, we just need to tweak it a little. I mean, we're in we're living it. Mm. It's what's astounding. We are literally living it. And I, I didn't believe that you and I were such sayers, but evidently we saw the future. Uh. Just then when I said, damn, I remembered when I looking at the wall behind me and it had a picture of Jesus and I couldn't even say, God damn it. <laughs> so I don't know if you remember this, mm-hmm. but the way you get non-Catholics to behave is you have them look at the Jesus and he's nailed up on the cross. Yeah. And usually you don't have to say anything more than that because he was the good guy and they still <laughs> did. <laughs> there's there's some work there to be had because you, you've got to have multi, not just ethnic, but religious ethnic audiences, right? Every time mm-hmm. you play in India. Oh, yeah. Huh. It's kind of a fun audience to work with for the sole reason that there will be Christians, Hindus, Muslims, right. everybody in the audience. And you kind of right. weave your way through it. Right. Sometimes just go hard at it like I do and insult every religion once. <laughs> <laughs> See if I can make it out of this room alive. <laughs> wow. I would I would love to try doing it in, a, in another country. Ireland is very difficult because you have so many hecklers. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants to be a comedian, but they don't have the, the, the clackers to get up on stage and do it. Remember the glass balls that used to, uh, mm-hmm. you're too young. So they were on strings and we would hit them back and forth and then they would explode in your face and shoot glass and everything. So you got to have a set of those to get up on stage. <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting. See, uh, I think the UK, all of the UK would be like one of the difficult places, Scotland, Ireland, right. even like England. It, those would England be would be the worst because they are like the, the farmers. Or mm-hmm. They've had the best comedians there. So what do you what do you got? Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, you all complain as a sport. Mm-hmm. So no what you do, someone is going to complain. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. But I, I would like to go to Edinburgh, the, the comedy festival in Edinburgh, which I believe is in September. You know, with a little bit of work, I'd be willing to go over there next year. Yeah. That should be I mean, fun. we just got to find a place to stay. I mean, you, you get booked at 1 a.m., 2 a.m. You got to find your own audience. That's That's got to be rough. But, mm-hmm. you know, we do have a podcast. I've got a couple of podcasts. <laughs> and I'm really well known for yelling at a school superintendent. So I got that going. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's my whole life right there. Jeez. Yeah, All my right. biggest hey, thing um, was don't yell at anybody today. <laughs> I, my big one is I've got to not get arrested. So the, um, hey, if you get an opportunity, look at some Instagram um, videos on Italy. I mean, man, I don't know how much rain they're getting, but geez. Whew. Is it and like- we didn't get it in Croatia. We had just like normal rain over there. So and Greece, the, we didn't have- the Last week or something, I was telling Alex that part of Europe is underwater. And he was like, it's yeah. not on the news yet. And I was like, okay. Right. 
Well, you know, our news is full of some ranting lunatic that wears too much makeup and a tie that covers his dong. <laughs> and then a really good looking lady that hopefully we can get in. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> at this at this point, there is no guarantee which way this is going because everybody is focused on six specific states and the rest of us can go fuck off. Nobody yep. cares. They're only worried about these people. So you have given the least common denominator the most power, which is the undecided voter this far into things. If you don't know which one you're voting for, maybe you shouldn't be allowed to vote. Maybe. Just mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> wish, wish us luck on this deal. Look, I, I authentically believe she's going to win and by a lot. Um, I did not think Hillary Clinton was going to win. Because mm -hmm. I was in the back of the rooms and I Democrats didn't like her. Yeah. And if your own people don't like you, it's hard to get votes from the other side. And it's not enough to not be the orange man. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's not enough. But they she she had a street fight with him verbally and beat him at every turn. And her people could out outrage him. And mm -hmm. he didn't know what to do with that. I mean, literally, but that doesn't mean for a fact she's going to win. Oh, well, we, like undecided are uh, one thing that I don't get, like, especially when they have them in like a focus group. And at the end yeah. of it, they're still undecided. I'm like, what? And they still look hearing? just as stupid. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they're looking for one reason not to like a candidate. Yeah. So I can I can go speak. I've got the look that all the all the whiteys like. Mm -hmm. And then when I start talking, they're like, oh, my God, I, he's a liberal. <laughs> But then I talk about business and money like you and I would talk about business and money, which I and I would talk about it at a level you and I would do. You've got a finance degree. I do not. But I've owned a lot of businesses and 90 percent were profitable. So I, I think I'm going to pat myself <laughs> on the back and start talking about money. Then they come back around. And what they do is they go, yeah, but he wants everybody to have health care. And, and finally, I have to just be mean and go, I know that you need somebody to be beneath you. Be they mm -hmm. black, brown, whoever it is, you can't be last. But mm -hmm. you get health care, too. It isn't just that they get it. You get it. So you're choosing not to get it for yourself mm -hmm. just so they can't get it. Do you know how stupid that is? I mean, and you got to be that blunt. Everybody always wants to have nuance and subtlety and all this. Now nah, you got to. Yeah. Sometimes a two by four is really what people mm -hmm. need. Yeah, sometimes the best words are just you fucking moron. <laughs> right. You you literally shouldn't be here. And uh and so I don't I, there've been a lot of discussions over the last 3 weeks whether I'm going to do anything politically and I'm like I get more done being on the sideline. I know mm -hmm. it's nice to it's nice to have a title cuz you know people have to refer to you. And I just feel like a douchebag when I'm in a meeting and they're like, "Well, oh, Vice Mayor McCummings is here." And you're like, "Uh Sean over here." An asshole to anybody that's not on my payroll. That's what I'm commonly known as. <laughs> you know, I just, I, I don't, um, I'd be, well, hell, I would hope if you and I do any shows over in India that I don't get arrested. That's what I have to be careful No, no, about, you I, would. So, yeah, to be honest with you, we, uh, like the crowds that come to an actual club or right. come to the shows, they're pretty open minded, dude. Yeah. Like if they're you listen to like, the, like oh, <laughs> They're not going to film me and send it into the man. No. Because <laughs> I honestly think that that particular fan base is usually not at these shows. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. They're not up after 10. They're like, they're old like me. They're, they're already in bed being angry at somebody in their dreams. Mm -hmm. Jesus, Pete. Well, today I am going down to Tulsa to a place called the gathering place. Did you ever go to it? Mm -mm. Okay. In a highly competitive state, like Oklahoma, not meaning we're competitive economically or educationally, but but we are between the two cities, like siblings. Mm -hmm. And Oklahoma City put a bunch of money into the city and built up a bunch of stuff. And then Tulsa felt like they had to do better. And so they built this place and it's supposed to be fantastic. And I'll let you know on the next show. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of having a little bit of a downer after all my trip, travel planning and all the other stuff. And you finally make it back. And then you no longer have jet lag. And then you're like, okay, well, I don't really have anything to do today. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're going to fill your day back up all over again, because that's what you and it, I do. <laughs> I know that, that is what we do. 
Well, give, um, I know we're getting ready to get off here, but give some thought to, let's figure out a, uh, maybe we do a, a writing deal mm-hmm. and, uh, and flip flop some stuff backwards and you give me an outline and I give you an outline and we'll, we'll shoot them back to each other. But I am still open to go do at least some open mics over there. Um, okay. Hey, JD Vance last night while he was speaking, kept speaking and doing this. And you know what this means? Isn't it white that, power like, mm-hmm. and, or you're sewing, you know, you're sewing <laughs> or you're a white supremacist. Yeah. That's like a really girly sign though, isn't it? Too? So what we used to do when we were younger is people would do it and hold it up against their body and they say, made you look and then they'd punch you and then I'd punch them back and they'd be like, you don't hit me back. And I go, don't hit me. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's this stupid deal. And it started with people, um, First time I ever saw it publicly was people getting a photo in the military, like 20 people from the same unit. And you'd have people doing this. And oh, wow. I thought it was a gang sign originally. And then turns out it maybe kind of is. But, you know, all whiteies don't come from the same place. Like we mm-hmm. were the um, the lower end of white. We were the Guatemalans of white people of Europe. <laughs> Us Irish. Yeah. <laughs> All right, homie, let's get out of here, but let's do some writing. I'm, I'm down for it. For sure. We should, Tim. And we need to redo right. our other show, the pilot we, script. We, well, I don't have a copy of it anywhere. That computer's like wrapped up in case the kids want the photos after I die. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send it over to you. Jesus, man. Right. <laughs> Tell your mom Keep and your sister. I, said, <laughs> I know, exactly. I'll see you, buddy. See you. <laughs>